All right, everyone, this is me, Kirby Erner, coming back to you, um, Secret Knowledge Part 2. I just moved my Camtasia to another platform, another Macintosh, um, another laptop. That's it in the picture. Actually, no, that's the old one in the picture. That's the one I'm now taking around to schools, um, going to various schools and sharing 2D and 3D animation, but part of the 3D animation especially is taking some actual so-called 3D shapes so that, uh, you know, kids don't start on a screen. They, they need to have some real geometry, right? And that's what I do is I teach what I call Martian math, Martian math. So if you're not familiar with my work, a lot of it's written. I don't just do... Um, YouTubes. This is something new, actually. I mean, there are quite a few YouTubes by me on the on the web as of today. Just looking at some books in my bookshelf here. I live in Portland, Oregon, in the Hawthorne District, right near the Baghdad Theater, which is currently showing on the screen there. That's owned by the McMiniman Brothers, which is uh, an empire, you could say. There are hundreds, well, maybe a hundred McMiniman uh, establishments around Oregon and Washington. They're brew pubs. A lot of them have theaters. Some of them have hotels. Now this screenshot is from my 2D animation class. So I've got a 3D and a 2D animation class going with coding with kids. And uh, I'm learning a lot. It, it's something that I'm not super expert at. What I'm more uh, familiar with is this uh, Martian math that I teach, that's the curriculum that I've invented. And at the Secret Knowledge Conference, we were under the gun to explain what it is we do, how we try to uh, to get out there in the world. And I said, well, I, I use Martian math as one of my brands. I like brand around Martian math. And in the next one minute, I want to just kind of show you what that means, if I can find the correct... I'm also a Quaker, and so let me get to Martian math through that. This was first day education program. Some adults in our Quaker meeting were in charge, and they just invited me to come by. I'm not like doing this full time, but there's what we call C60 in front of the meeting house in the background. This is the uh, Stark Street meeting house, which is in walking distance from where I live. And C60, it's a long story, but if you've ever heard of Buckminster Fuller, that's a good entry point. That's Ron Marson with some kids there. And let's see, um, Kenneth Snelson is another influence. He invented, Kenneth did something called tensegrity, or took it to new levels. It's actually, as I talk about in some of my other videos, a bit of a controversy Fuller, Buckminster Fuller, and Kenneth Snelson were kind of rivals. They were not easy with their relationship as to like who should get credit for tensegrity and so forth. If you're a starving artist, you can't really afford to um, to let it go when your publicity is at stake. It's how it feels at the conference. People are really eager to to get their work out there and if it's like well you're just like a cover band or you didn't write your own music that's a diss if it's not true and so if you think that someone else invented uh tensegrity and you're just picking piggybacking it's not really original like we spend a lot of time in this culture trying to figure out who invented what and who should get credit for what because we kind of live in a time with you know patrons in the old days in Europe, if you couldn't find a king or somebody to like back you, if you're like an intellectual and you couldn't find somebody to sponsor you, you were out of luck. And so, you know, there was a lot of like competition. We think that was invented recently or something, but competition is not a new phenomenon by any means. So this is an actual Martian math class that I'm scrolling through pictures of now that was at Reed College this summer. And you can see the C60, by which I mean this particular artifact, featured prominently. It wasn't the whole story. Part of the story is actual science fiction around Mars, including the 
famous reading around Halloween of War of the Worlds by Orson Welles and how that set off a panic, right? That was quite a while back. Forget the exact dates right now, but I played some of that broadcast during the class. It was a summer camp. Kids would just show up for about an hour a day for about five days. It was not a super intensive class. And one thing I said in today's conference at the Secret Knowledge Conference is I'd like to share this with more adults and also older kids just because there's a longer attention span there sometimes. And also, if you're yourself a math teacher and you're vested in teaching math, I think that you would find some really interesting content here that you may not have been exposed to because our culture has been very lazy, actually, about sharing the Bucky stuff. I, I've gotten to where I, I attribute it to laziness more than anything else. Also, a little bit of fear in that people don't like to stand out as being in any way different. They say they do, but really conformity is pretty much what it's about. So take, for example, this will be my last uh, topic for this video, this volumes table. This is from the whiteboard at Reed College. Do you recognize these volume numbers? I would guess not. A tetrahedron with volume one, a cube of three. We always make the cube one. It's almost like a, a, an article of religion that the cube should be our unit of volume. And in this Martian math I teach, which is inspired by the Bucky stuff, we make the tetrahedron a unit of volume. And then we divide it into these other shapes which nest around the tetrahedron, like two crisscross tetrahedron make a cube of volume three if the tetrahedron is one. The dual of that cube that has uh, edge lengths the same as the diagonal of the cube, it, it'd be better to show you another graphic if I wanted you to understand all this, but do look at the nice whole number volumes down the side here. Not the icosahedron, that's an irrational 18.51, etc. Can be expressed so simply in terms of phi, Greek letter phi, golden mean. I'll talk about that in other videos. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, I'm getting back in the habit. I'll be doing more and better videos as time goes on. This is kind of a benchmark where you can see um, how I was back in November of 2018 and compare it as we go into the future. This is Kenneth Snelson's website. He and I were friends, by the way. We used to hang out in New York. I stayed over with him a few times in his uh, very cool apartment in downtown Manhattan. I also visit him in his uh, summer uh, place. He was like a very successful artist. So for all his fighting with Buckminster Fuller, that actually might have helped in the long run make him more famous that he had this rivalry going on with Bucky Fuller. So like I say, there's a lot of me out there already. I've done other YouTubes. This is not the first by any means. And I have websites, and uh, I'm easy to find because Kirby Erner, I'm probably the only one with that name, right? Because Kirby's pretty obscure, and Erner is very obscure. And when you put those together, it's like I'm the only one. So Googling me is easy because it's not going to be mixed up with everybody else uh, named the same thing because they aren't. Okay, so that's to get you going if you're new here. Otherwise, uh, welcome back. Good to see you all again, and we'll continue in a future YouTube.